Today, we're putting the final touches on the Hemi swap in our 2007 JK Wrangler. We're reinstalling the drivetrain, adding a new exhaust, and putting all the pieces back in place so we can fire up our 345 horse 5.7 liter V8 Hemi. Then, we're adding Super Sport stripes to our low buck sport truck. It's all today here on Truck Tech. Hey, welcome to Truck Tech. Well, this 93 Chevy pickup is really shaping up and it's just about done, kind of winding down on the project. And so far, we're really happy with the way this thing has been transformed from a mild up, just a worn out pickup truck to a very presentable and very cool looking daily driver. With almost everything done, there's a couple little details that we wanted to address, one of them being paint. And I wanted to show you guys a detail that you can do that's going to lift this paint job from just a respray to a full on custom job for a fraction of the financial and time investment that you would think went into it. All right, now before Kevin gets his paint gun out, we've got some work to do here on the shop on our JK Hemi swap. Last time you guys saw this thing, we had the engine in trans sitting in between the frame rails for a test fit. Since then, we've had a chance to fully weld in the engine mounts, get them all painted up, and well, this engine in trans is in there to stay. And that means we've got a bunch of work to do to get it up and running. Hooking up things like power steering, the AC lines, finishing up this wiring, getting a radiator in here so we can finish up the engine bay, and we've got to hang a transfer case off the back of the transmission and get an exhaust system installed. So hopefully by the end of the day, we can hear how our new Hemi sounds. Now we've got a lot of work to do, so we're gonna be moving through it pretty quickly. The first thing we're doing is hanging the stock transfer case off of the back of the swapped in truck transmission, and it bolts right up. Then the TK shift cable bracket gets installed, which is hard to get to. My goodness for ratcheting wrenches. Now this bracket was part of the kit, and the transfer case shifter cable slides right in. Then we can install the transmission mount adapter to the back of the transmission. This will allow us to reuse the original transmission mount assembly. The rubber isolators on ours were in good shape, so we have no problem reusing it. Then we install the transmission adapter plate that goes on top of the cross member. Then reinstall the factory cross member and tighten everything down. Then the support plate that goes on the bottom of the transmission cross member. Since the mount has moved back off the cross member, it helps provide a little bit of support. This is the exhaust system we're using on our JK Hemi swap. And although it's not part of the kit, it did come from Jeep Speed Shop. It offers a bolt-on solution from the manifolds down, which is pretty trick. And since it does require fore and aft O2 sensors that are original style with the connections, we're gonna go ahead and reuse the ones from the JK that came off of it since the mileage was low enough and it wasn't throwing any coats. The way we think, if it's not broke, let's not replace it. There's a solution that Matco offers where you're not gonna round off the flats on your O2 sensors and it makes short work out of pulling these things out and even putting them back in and not over torquing. Now for heater hoses, rather than replace the entire section or the full length of hose, what we're gonna do is gonna keep a portion of the factory hose because it's molded and fits nicely around the cylinder head. So we're just gonna splice into it using 5 8 heater hose from the parts store. We also swapped out a couple of noisy idler pulleys, replaced the belt tensioner, installed a new oil filter, and a new serpentine belt. We're gonna be running a mechanical fan. Now the factory battery box or tray gets replaced with a steel version that came with our swap kit. But this one holds two batteries. The installation is pretty straightforward, but a little cumbersome because you're dealing with the wire harness, all these connectors, and well, it just takes a few tries to make sure everything lines up correctly and all the connectors and wires will fit underneath the fuse box once you get it in place. And the nice thing is all this wiring well, it plugs right in. There's no splicing, looking for key on power, or adding relays. It's pretty slick. Just don't forget to reattach the factory fuse panel power supply. You won't be going anywhere. Now, to get our power steering system up and running, we use the JK Reservoir, a relocation bracket from the swap kit, 
modified JK feed and return lines, and the supplied power steering pressure line. And it worked out pretty well. All right, next up, we're gonna install the fuel adapter line that came in our Jeep Speed Shop swap kit and the evaporative emissions line that came on our JK from the factory. Now, this line uses factory style connectors and it'll plug right in. Now, if you guys remember, we use this DEI heat shield sleeve to protect the wiring harness when we cut off the original engine mounts. Well, now we're gonna use it to provide some heat shielding and a little bit of abrasion resistance to our new fuel line. Up next, it's time to fire up our Hemi. And later, it's Super Sport Stripes 101. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to Truck Tech, where we're prepping for the installation of our exhaust system on our Hemi swapped Wrangler. And that means trimming a little bit of metal off the upper control arm brackets to make room. Now the exhaust system downpipes were supplied by Jeep Speed Shop, and it's a worthwhile investment. If you had to fabricate this exhaust system by hand, fit underneath here and along the cross member, you'd have some serious time invested because there's a lot of parts under here. Obstacle course. There we go. Once you've got the front half of the exhaust system positioned where you want it, well then you can snug down the connections at the manifolds, along with plugging in the O2 sensors both before and after the converters. Then you can reinstall the factory skid plates. Now even though we've moved the transfer case back about four inches, well the factory skid plate is still gonna work and offer some protection. Pretty nice how that worked out. And with the Jeep back on the ground, we installed the evaporative emissions purge valve on our battery box, reattach the electrical connector, and plug in the line. She's a piece of vacuum tube. The other end of this hose gets attached to an unused port on the intake manifold. Then we can get to work reassembling the front end of this thing. Starting with the radiator support and plugging in the headlights. Once that's loosely in position, then we can move on to the radiator and AC condenser. I wanted to install them as an assembly, so I went ahead and bolted them together. It's a lot easier to do it outside of the vehicle than it is to try to wrestle them in place individually. Now this is a nice aluminum radiator and you don't wanna mess it up getting it into position. Now, speaking of radiators, there's guys that say you can get away with using a stock radiator on a Hemiswap JK. There's also guys that say if you use a stock radiator, you're gonna have overheating issues. So we erred on the side of caution and went for the radiator upgrade. Because we don't wanna have to dial it back while we're out having fun in our new V8 powered Wrangler because of an overheating issue. Now the radiator hoses were part of the kit and I did have to temporarily relocate or move to the side the power steering reservoir so I could get the hose in place. Then all we've got left to do to finish up the front end is add the grill. All right, now we've got our AC lines plumbed, we've got the intake plenum on, Got all the fluids topped off and we've got a Duralast battery in our dual battery tray. We'll worry about the second battery later. And we've also gone ahead and cycled the key a few times to prime the fuel system and check for leaks. And I think at this point, we're ready to fire this thing up and see how it sounds. Okay, T, go for it. Nice. Nice and quiet. Up here, give it a couple of blips. All right, that's good. All right, now it sounds really good, albeit a bit loud, so let's get a muffler on this thing. Now the exhaust system we picked up when we got our V8 swap kit was complete from the manifolds to the tailpipe, but we wanted to install a Gibson muffler. The problem is we no longer had a stock exhaust configuration, so we ended up going with a Gibson three inch stainless steel universal muffler that we're gonna be plumbing in. But if you still have stock exhaust on your Jeep and you want a little bump in performance, well, Gibson has a capex system you might be interested in. To make a little extra room for our muffler, I did have to move the charcoal canister a little bit closer to the drive shaft. Not a big modification, just had to drill a couple of new holes through the cross members and add a through bolt. 
and that created just enough room to sneak in our stainless steel Gibson muffler and clamp it in place. After the break, how to use quarter inch tape to make super sport stripes. Stay tuned. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, welcome back to Truck Tech. We thought we'd take a break from what we're doing and focus back on the paint job. Now, we love the color. It's great and it looks fine. It would be okay to leave this truck just the way it is, but it's called the Low Buck Sport Truck. So we want to do a throwback tribute to GM muscle cars and do super sport stripes on the hood and on the tailgate, but we're going to do it with a twist. It's going to be subtle, it's going to be custom, and it's going to be easy. We're going to show you how, but the first thing we got to do is get rid of this dust because it's dangerous. You can't even touch it. It'll scratch the paint. I'm using glass cleaner and a clean microfiber towel. Essentially what I'm doing is putting enough glass cleaner on to be able to lift the dirt up and then wipe it off in one direction without scratching the paint. Blech. The second stage involves another clean microfiber and just basically getting the rest of the glass cleaning residue off of the panel. And now we've got a perfectly clean panel to do whatever we want to do with it without risking scratching the paint. There's no end to the different varieties and designs of stripes. Super Sport stripes have an iconic look, but there's no rules here. You can be custom if you want. So I'm using this guy that I pulled off the internet. It's just a printed off picture of a basic layout on a 69 Chevelle. I like the way the stripes terminate, and we're going to go with that design as a loose guide. The first thing that you always want to do when you're doing graphics is establish your center line because you want symmetry. It has to be even on both sides. With the hood, it's easy. We've got a peaked edge, so it kind of tells its own story. I'm using a high contrast orange plastic tape that's going to give me a nice contrast and let me look at the proportions when I stand back and squint my eyes. After that, it's just mimicking the layout of the rendering or the image that we lifted off the internet and kind of guessing at the spacing. One of the great things about working without a template is that the design is truly yours and you can change it if you want to. There's no rules here other than what you think looks good. It's your project. Now right here, the way I like to put this is that we're asking the tape to curve the corner instead of telling it to. There's a fine line between stretching it too much and pulling the shape out of it and massaging it around a corner. If you watch closely what I'm doing, it's a combination of pressing it down while I'm stretching the tape. And if you use a little bit of patience, well, you can make the tape do just about anything you want and pretty much conform to any shape that you want to create. I've got to correct this. I've got to bring this line up to my spacer there real light touch. Get that guy out of the way. I'm just recreating that curve with a tape that's thin enough. It's easy to do it. If you're a little confused at what I'm doing, don't worry, the truth is about to be revealed. There are three distinct lines, each a designated space. The center line is a quarter inch, and get ready. The space that we want on the outside of the stripe or the outside perimeter stripe, well, we wanted it a quarter inch wide, which is pretty typical of super sport stripes. The tape gives us a perfect quarter inch all the way around. Here we go. Now it's just a matter of removing the center stripe, and then the design is revealed. Watch the technique that I'm using to remove the tape itself. It's pulling the tape against its own edges, and in some cases, especially when you're unmasking paint, it will actually cut the paint and create a straighter line. Masking, well, it's just masking, and you're covering up the spots you don't want paint on. Pretty simple, kind of a no-brainer. However, using two-inch masking tape can save you time both on masking the panels up as well as unmasking. El Dono. Hey, welcome back to Truck Tech, where we're showing you the last few details on making your own template for super sports stripes. On these corners, I'm not asking the tape to do something it doesn't want to do. Just straight pieces, but I'm making sure that I'm covering up at least half of that line of the fine line. 
So once you realize that the tape itself can help you with your layout, being a perfect quarter inch wide spacer, well, it's that much easier. And if you can re read a measuring tape and find your center line, well, you're rocking and rolling. Now, prep is another thing. I carefully scuffed this, and you've got to be very careful to get right up close to the stripe. I may give this another once over, because after all, if you don't have a scratch pattern in it, the clear won't stick to it. So you've got to make sure that you have all your bases covered, your T's crossed, and your I's dotted, and then the fun part comes, which is where we're headed next, into the spray booth. Fresh paint is really clean, but we're still giving it a final wipe down, this time with alcohol to serve as an anti-static as well as clean the surface. Almost every paint manufacturer has a version of pre-flattened clear coat. There are many different levels of flatness, and we've chosen an eggshell for our particular look. The first coat is a very light coat because we're not after a bunch of film build on the paint itself. After about 15 minutes flash time, we do a heavier second coat. Now you want to respect the rules of the clear and the goal here is to have a streak-free surface which can sometimes be a challenge with pre-flattened clear coats. Here I'm unmasking with the clear just out of dust which means it's dry enough to where it won't take anything in the surface but it's still pretty sensitive. Unmasking with the paint still wet, allow the edges to self-level. That's what I'm talking about. Well, check it out. A very subtle but very cool custom effect that brings this budget paint job up into the realm of a full-on custom job with the hood and the tailgate now bathed in semi-gloss super sport stripes. And here's the real kicker. About three hours of your labor, because we showed you how to do it at home, and a minimal cost in materials. Brings this truck right up to its name, Lobox Sport Truck. Now all we got to do is drive this thing. An air hammer has a bunch of different uses in the shop, not just in the body shop. And the new Matco MT2816K steps up the game. It's got a patented quick release, making bit changes a snap. It's ergonomically designed with a vibration control system built in and a variable speed throttle mixed in with the trigger for more detailed work. The MT2816K comes with an assortment of bits and a case, as well as delivering 20% more power over comparative tools, and is available wherever Matco products are sold. Now, if you've got a 2013 or 2014 Dodge 2500 or 3500 series truck and you want a leveling kit, check out what Zone Off-Road has to offer. These all-steel fabricated leveling spacers bolt to the factory upper coil buckets and provide a full two inches of lift to level out the stance of a new Ram heavy-duty truck. The spacer is pitched to properly match the angle of the factory coil mount and locates the factory rubber isolator for correct coil spring indexing. This kit can be added to the truck by itself as a quick upgrade or paired with the optional hydraulic or nitro zone front and rear shocks. These two-inch spacers are powder-coated for long life and designed for radius arm trucks Price it around 100 bucks. Well, it's a great value. A lot of bang for your buck from Zone Off Road. Now, if you're looking for a traditional look or restoration quality for your old F1 or F100 pickup, nothing beats the appearance of stainless steel dog dish hubcaps. These beautifully polished stainless steel hubcaps have the Ford script stamped into them, and you could even paint it to match your vehicle. And the fact that they're a Ford licensed product, well, that means you know they're going to fit. So whether it's retro or restoration that you're going for, LMC Truck has everything that you're going to need for your pickup truck project, from hardcore sheet metal to beautiful details like these stainless steel hubcaps. Thanks for watching Truck Tech. We'll see you guys soon.